Hi, this is MetaGeek Trent, and I'm going to take you through a quick run-through of Channelizer Pro. In this run-through, we're going to identify sources of interference like a microwave oven. We're going to create a custom signature, and we're also going to use the Device Finder directional antenna to track down a source of interference. Let's get started. We're going to go to the Start menu and click on Channelizer Pro to open up the software. It may be, un it may be under the directory called MetaGeek. But here we have Channelizer Pro running. Uh, when you ha when you start Channelizer, it may it may look something like this. And when I when I use Channelizer, I usually like to kind of minimize the views a little bit so I'm not looking as at as much data. Um, so I turn off the outline and I turn off the max. So I basically have the current and the density, and I'll turn off transmitters right now. In the far left, we have a navigation pane, and this top pane, um, these these two. We call this the overview pane, and then this bottom section is the details pane. It may help to kind of relate this to uh, like an Outlook type thing where you have your folders on the left here, and then you also have your, your messages here, and then when you actually click on the messages, you get details about a specific message here. The same is true here because we can choose what we view in the overview pane here and the details pane will update in the overview pane. So we can have several options based on what we choose in the navigation pane. So that's that's how uh, Channelizer Pro is laid out. Now we're going to go into some of the more basic fundamentals of what Channelizer is doing. Here in the navigation pane, we have some playback controls. These are fairly similar to your your typical DVR type controls, where you've got play, you've got fast forward, and pause. So if I pause it, it's going to stop the activity. However, it's not going to stop Channelizer from recording the data. So what I have highlighted in this green box is kind of what I'm looking at right now. So if I shorten the time frame, you notice that in the overview pane it will also update to what I've selected here. And I can also go forward in time and I can start play again once I go to the top or I can go back press pause. I can press play and press fast forward which will take it a little bit quicker going back to real time. I also have the option to adjust the time span. I can adjust it to you know a two minute or five minute interval. I usually recommend one to two minutes. Uh, that keeps all of the data relevant to what you are doing right now and your position. So you can be walking around an office and you'll have a one minute time interval that you're looking at and it'll be continually dropping off the data and you'll know what I mean later as we go on through this. So this yellow bouncing line that we see here is your current RF energy in the 2.4 gigahertz band. And I know that sounds totally foreign but it's it's not that bad. Um, and what I will do is I'll, I'll change the, these frequency labels to Wi-Fi channel labels and it might make a little bit more sense. Some of you are used to the insider graph where you see these network graphs and they're kind of overlapping each other. And the same is going to be true here except we are going to show all of the RF activity whether it's Wi-Fi or non-Wi-Fi as I, as I go on through this discussion. So th what we see here is just the RF activity. This could be anything. It could be Bluetooth, it could be Wi-Fi, it could be a cordless phone, it could be a microwave oven. We don't really know. There, there are a few tricks that you can use to interpret what we're seeing right now, but with Channelizer we make it a lot easier because we create a density map of the activity. So a density map, is, or you know, a heat map, whatever is going to be easier for you to understand. When this yellow line hits points again and again, the more often it hits a point, it's going to be dr drawing it more red, uh, indicating something that's more dense. And there's a lot of blues and greens, and that means that there's not a lot of activity there, so we probably don't need to worry about it as much. However, these spikes here, uh, we can see that the yellow line is constantly uh, drawn there, which means there's constantly activity there, hence the red, the red coloration. I'm going to turn off the density view uh, so we can compare what, what this activity is to the waterfall view. Now the waterfall view is, is incredibly useful and that's why we actually use it for the navigation, the nav navigation piece in Channelizer Pro. The current activity, it's being drawn as frequency and amplitude. 
the waterfall view is actually frequency over time and the amplitude levels are drawn in colors so these these green dots you see here that are going downward are actually points in time where the amplitude levels were high so if I were to turn on a cordless phone we can see in the current we see that this cordless phone is being drawn here and this cordless phone is constantly creating traffic now the high point uh, that we see here being drawn by the cordless phone is you know well above negative 40 dBm and if I turn on um, color by amplitude and turn on the density view we can actually see that this red matches the red we're seeing in the waterfall view so at about 437 the, the cordless phone was turned on I'm going to turn it off now and we'll see in the waterfall view that the cordless phone has turned off so that's basically how the the waterfall view works as the cordless phone goes out of the time span that data is going to drop off and it'll be drawn less in the density map I can shorten the time span you'll see that it'll disappear or I can double click to a point in the history of the Channelizer Pro recording and you'll see that uh, all of the, all everything in the overview pane eventually updates. The same is true for the details pane as well. In this example, we are going to build a signature. So if you navigate to files.metageek.net slash recordings slash yamaha.wsx, you will be able to follow along in this recording and create your own signature for a for a wireless audio projector made by Yamaha. So what we're going to do is we're going to kind of browse uh, this recording. We're going to look for anything that might stick out. Um, I noticed that they've got wireless networks on channels 1 and it looks like on channel 13. So this may be, uh, th this is a recording from uh, a European country. So when I look here, I notice that something does pop out and it looks, it looks bad. I know that it's bad because of the duty cycle. Now duty cycle is a calculation that says how often was the RF activity above a certain threshold. In this case that the duty cycle threshold is negative 80. So in this um, time span of 6 minutes and 27 seconds that I have selected, how much of the activity was above negative 80? So I know that this this activity was it's obviously fairly dense in the density map and by by how often it's broadcasting I know that this is probably causing a lot of interference on Wi-Fi channel 1. And I also know that it's a Yamaha uh, wireless audio device. So let's make a signature based on the shape that it makes. I'm, we're going to turn on outline view. Now outline view uh, basically creates uh, it try it attempts to create the same shape that is found in the density map and this is what channelizer is going to use to automatically identify devices so it's going to be constantly matching uh, a certain shape to the outline view and how, whatever the percentage that it matches it's going to tell you that so you can say you know only match devices that are in within a 90 percent threshold so let's go ahead and create a signature for this you're going to click and you're going to drag and highlight across and you'll go to create new classifier and I'm gonna say Yamaha wireless audio actually let's just say Yamaha so your signature that you just created will show up in the signatures tab and I'm going to set this threshold to 90. Otherwise, it'll probably probably pop up whenever I'm using Channelizer because it, they'll just randomly throw it in there. Uh, I like to keep it at 90 because if, if it's popping up, there's a very good chance that whatever is there is a Yamaha wireless audio device. So I've created the shape. I can click on the box and I can hover to see that it matches that shape. Now I can unclick and it, it'll stop hovering over with my mouse. And if I press play and I turn on the density view and I turn on the outline view, you'll only really need the outline view for creating signatures. Otherwise, I would just turn it off. Now, when I have transmitters turned on, it's going to attempt to match the shape that I just created. And it'll, it'll draw the Yamaha here. It looks like it's kind of hanging off the edge a bit. But it'll draw the Yamaha there. Uh, 
in attempts of matching the signature and it says you know 96.3 percent it it thinks that this is a Yamaha projector that is how you create a, a signature in Channelizer Pro it's you can do the same in Channelizer 4 it, it won't automatically guess what it is but you'll still have the ability to hover uh, over there Now if we go to a live capture, we're going to use one of the tools in Channelizer Pro called Device Finder. So I've turned on the cordless phone and we can see we can see the activity right around channel four. The the coolest part about this is that I just need to select the frequency. So I see that this is here, I know that it's transmitting. So I'm gonna select that frequency range and I'm gonna go to device finder. What this does is it it creates kind of a, a signal strength graph of that particular frequency range that I have selected here. So when you see that there is these these red bars, they are related to what we are seeing here. So if I were to move the move the cordless phone, uh, and I, I've got my DBX attached to a, a directional antenna as well, so we'll we'll see a few differences uh, as we experiment with the directional antenna. So if I turn the directional antenna away from the from the cordless phone you can see that the amplitude levels decrease whereas if I turn it to face the cordless phone a little bit better we can increase the increase the amplitude levels that we're reading the directional antenna is going to tell you where to go so when you are out looking for a device it gives you a little bit more uh, in troubleshooting so if I turn if I turn the directional antenna away we'll see that it drops down and even if I if, even if the cordless phone is further away from the the, the Y spy, you can see that the amplitude level has decreased quite a bit. And I'm going to bring it back to the computer with the Y spy plugged in, and we see that the amplitude levels increase again. And that's how easy it is to find a narrow band, narrow band transmitter. And I've turned it off, so you'll see that it, it drops completely completely down. Um, there's some good advice that Keith Parsons gives, and he says that if you if you can't turn it off, you haven't found it yet. And that's good advice for when you are doing things with uh, interference. You're going to want to turn off, be able to turn off a device, and that's that's when you know you have actually found it. Uh, when we look at the waterfall view, we notice that we uh, we notice that the cordless phone started. We we see it kind of going further away, and this is all. This will happen with the directional antenna. So as you are facing whatever is transmitting, you'll be able to see it better. Whereas if you turn around and face the opposite way, the the amplitude levels will be a little bit lower. The device finder feature in Channelizer Pro, it's really good for narrow band transmitters. It's not very good for access points. I'm just going to throw that out there because, you know, a wireless client may uh, be causing it. A wireless client is also going to create activity in the 2.4 gigahertz band. So it may cause a little bit of confusion for the device finder. But in this case, uh, we are doing it just by frequency range, so you'll be able to highlight a narrow band transmitter and track it down pretty efficiently. If you have any questions about YSPY or Channelizer, or if you even have a recording that you'd like us to look at, send those over to support at minigeek.net. Thank you.